I just did a, a week of climate week in New York and, and it, it was for the most part, it was great. I mean, I'm really happy. I came, I'm inspired by the sessions that I went to and you know, that's what's important. What's important is that we meet people who we can get to know and get to love and, and make changes one person at, at a time. I mean, Alan Savory talks very clearly about the difference between individuals and institutions. And institutions you know, are not going to learn or change in a way that that will be substantive enough to avert global warming, but but individuals can, and <clears throat> maybe you know new institutions will evolve, um, or slowly slowly institutions will change. But the point is, when when I go to these events and like when I go to the COPs, the the UN climate conferences. You know, I don't go because I think the organizers of those events are going to change anything or, you know, or, or really be sincere or care. Um, I go because I know that there's good people there who are also going and and I want to meet with them. And we're we're building coalitions. And the fact is climate change will start to re reverse when there are viable alternatives to what's going on now that's that's making things bad. And um, you know in the in the energy sector, it's just so obvious um, that the electric cars will replace, fossil fuel burning cars when they're just a better deal for the average person, you know? Um, and, <clears throat> and, you know, and, and it's similar with any innovation. Um, the, the better innovation just sort of has to win on its own. And it's true in the ag sector as well. You know, people will start doing the regenerative practices when it just makes more sense. And more and more people are discovering that it just does. Um, Alan Savory didn't invent global uh, holistic management because he cared about global warming. He probably had never even heard of global warming. Um, and it, it, it certainly it had nothing to do with meat. Um, and it wasn't even technically about soil in the sense we think of it in terms of like being a store of carbon. It was just to bring back really the above ground biodiversity, just to plant cover and to end the erosion. Um, and so you know, I sort of see it that way with, you know, the regenerative grazing. It's not going to be about climate. It's going to be about land cover and bringing back biodiversity and the, the wildlife and the million other things and creating better, healthier food and better animals, stopping erosion, stopping flooding. And yes, there will be carbon credits. There certainly will be um for better or worse but then there'll be other kinds of credits as well um and there'll be some of them will be scams but some will be real i mean the the the, the um the ecosystem of different human activities and management systems and accounting systems the whole thing is slowly evolving And, and I just see that it's just going to get better, not worse. You know, the fact that some carbon credit schemes have been abused, um, <clears throat> you know, that's too bad.
<laughs> you know, and lots of and labels have been abused, you know, that's that's too bad. But but some are sincere. And some are doing a good thing and setting a good precedent. And that's that's really where we want to um we just want to focus our energy on that. And um, you know, I'm meeting people in organizations who are who the organizations themselves are largely um um you know in the in the hands of, of big ag and big money and they may be using those organizations for a certain greenwashing but there's still good people there trying to do the right thing and they're being infiltrated by 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 good actors and uh that's what we just have to keep doing <laughs>